Hello homeschool friends. I have uh, been asked a question about Robinson curriculum and classical conversations doing one or the other or both and how do they work together and I've tried several times to sit down and type out a response to that and I, I can't do it. <laughs> I, I can't do it because I need to know more about you and where you are and what you're looking for in your homeschool. Because I know people have come up to me go and said, oh yeah, just take your kids on nature walks. Tell them to take their kids on nature walks. And I'm going, I hate nature walks. I hate nature walks. I'm not going to listen to you anymore. No, I'm going to listen to you because you're my friend. But anyway, I don't like nature walks. <laughs> so it just made me aware that when I'm saying, hey, this is great, hey, this is great, uh, you might hate it. And that's totally fine. But I don't want to say this is great. This is great. So in order to answer uh, this question, I think it would require that we sit in the park together for a couple hours and talk while, our, while we watch our kids play together. That's usually how we do it here in my community. So let me, let me, try. I don't know what I'm going to title this thing yet because I really don't know where this conversation is going to go. But I'm going to talk about Robinson curriculum and classical conversations. And, um, Let's see, where am I? My kids were in second, fourth, and sixth grade this year. We've homeschooled from the beginning. I've done RC and CC together. Just so happened I found them both like simultaneously. And I, I did Robinson first and found CC immediately about the time I found out you're not supposed to join a group, right? <laughs> so I, I struggled with that for a while and then it just, it's, it's fine. It worked out great. And um, so, going to talk about Robinson curriculum um, you know and it's going to be different for you if you you know if you're new to homeschooling and you're starting off with your firstborn kindergartner okay this is all brand new and you're starting from the beginning um, it's going to be completely different than if your kids have been in school somewhere else and now you're pulling them out and I might not have a lot of information on that because um, I'm not sure I would, I would know what that would be like. Um, and then there's, um, okay, I'm going to tell you, since we've been in classical conversations for six years, um, we're going into the challenge program this coming year. And I'm starting to see that challenge is the point. It's the whole point of classical conversations. When Lee Borton's developed classical conversations, she did the challenge program first and after writing that curriculum she had two more kids and she's like well I know what to teach them now when they're young I'm going to to teach them classically according to the classical method and I'm going to prepare them for specifically for these challenge years because I'm, I'm beginning to see I don't understand it yet and I may not understand it for 10 or 20 years um, but I'm beginning to see that that's going to be the point because um, so if you're not looking if, if challenge is not your goal or your objective or something that would be important to you then I'm not sure that you want to go this route um, and so maybe consider just RC but you know I've said classical conversations is a lot of things like it's friends for my kids it's friends for me it's a community you know we we go through life together you know people have ups and downs and problems and, and celebrations and joys and new babies and just all kinds of things and we're living this together and uh, that is just that's life changing right there I mean assuming you get a good community you could end up each community is independently licensed and you could just get a bunch of quacks <laughs> you know or you could go in and, and just let's, let's do this better everybody come on you could just be an encouragement and lift everyone up and just change the whole environment. Okay, uh, that being said, I, I don't know any quacks. We have so many CC communities in our area. It's just um, crazy. And I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, I can't name them all. And they're all just, they're great. All these people are great. And while I'm talking about how great homeschool moms are, I realized I just did VBS this week at church. And so I spent a lot of time with a lot of moms who are not homeschool moms. And you know, I see all my, my friends, my homeschool mom community, whom I know really well, right? And I think they're just, 
they're just great people. They're really special and unique and just um, impressive as moms and, and wives and teachers and, and whatever, just as people. They're very impressive people. And I'm thinking, are they any different from you know other moms? And I think I know the answer is uh, the other moms are busy doing other things and they're elsewhere and I only see them for an hour at church on Sunday or you know rarely and if we do get together with our life group well it's an effort I mean, you have to stop life basically to show up and do that thing and that's still only two hours a quarter okay but our CC uh, community we have committed I mean we're not signing up to let's go be friends with each other we're signing up for let's get together every week and put on a school day for our kids and I say school in a classical term, not like traditional, mo I mean modern terms. But anyway, we get together and we work, I and mean, we are the school, and we do it for one day a week, and we're committed to that. And over time, you've spent all this time together doing life together, and that's where the friendships come. So the reason, I think, every mom out there is an awesome mom, but we just don't know you, because you won't jump in here and do this crazy stuff uh, <laughs> that we're doing with our kids. So where was I going? Classical conversations. Okay, I know I've said it's uh, friends for my kids and it's friends for me and it's a community of fellowship and we hold each other accountable and hey, how are you doing on this, you know, essentials um, writing paper with your kids this week? You know, hey, what did you do for this? Are you doing grammar? Are you doing, you know, all the questions that we ask each other. Um, so there's that. So that's one of the goals. But I think academically for the kids, um, when we get into challenge, this year it's like, it's challenge A, I'm going to call it baby challenge, like our intro, I just made that up. It's the introduction into challenge of, of the format that it's going to be and the direction that it's going to take. And so they're going to do their work the four days outside of community. And on the fifth day, um, when we meet together for the whole day, the parents will drop their kids off and the tutor is in the room with the kids. Um, well, there's all the younger kids on the same campus usually just in case you're wondering <laughs> okay but it's the tutor and the kids and this is a seminar and every hour you change the topic that you're talking about like we're going to, to we're going to discuss math this hour and then we're going to discuss Latin for an hour and then we're going to discuss science uh, research for an hour okay and the point of it is you know, there's some introducing new topics and there's some presentation skills and all these, you know, nuts and bolts. But a lot of it is going to be the tutor drawing the children out into discussions to talk with each other back and forth. And our literature books, um, you can see that on the CC website, the, uh, the book list. Um, they're going to read a book every three weeks and write a paper on it. And um, But mainly we're going to discuss it in class. and. The point is, we're going to ask questions like, the questions are going to turn to, you know, is it ever okay to lie? Why? Why not? You know, and we're going to, we're just going to question it um, as they say in program. We're going to drill down until they themselves wrestle with the answers. It's not a teacher standing up front going, this is what, this is when it is acceptable to lie, you know, to keep from embarrassing someone or whatever. It's not anyone presenting information for them to take and memorize and go, okay, I got it, I got it. It's them wrestling with it themselves. Just like, okay, this is just like Robinson curriculum math, the way Dr. Robinson says, do the math. You let the student sit there, don't help them. Let the student sit there and wrestle with that, with that concept. Because until they wrestle with it themselves, it's, it's, not, it's really not going to do any good for you to stand there and tell it to them. Because, you know, <laughs> how interesting is it? And you're going to check out in the middle anyway. And, and what were you talking about, Mom? Oh, yeah, right, okay. But when you just, if you can just get it to where they have a place where they can wrestle with it themselves, that's where they really learn it. And they learned it faster than if you had been teaching it, and they learned it better, and they're going to remember it. 
more easily and they're not um, resentful at you or ah, she's always telling me what to do yak 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 mom's always you know and I hear people who say I can't homeschool my kid doesn't listen to me and I'm like I know exactly what you mean yet somehow I've been homeschooling all three kids for six years how is that so Robinson curriculum and that whole method works there so challenge I'm talking about the children discussing big ideas big concepts and coming to conclusions on their own and think about I don't know I grew up in public school like everyone else I know and that's not true anymore I know a lot of people who are homeschooled and I'm homeschooling with them we're homeschooling our kids together okay but most everybody that went to public school you uh, were taught material or you had textbooks and this is what you were responsible to learn and you learned that or you memorized that and that's what you were graded on and you got your grade and graduated and went on but and then you went to college and how long was it before you know it's in your mid-twenties or late thirties or as you go through life and you come up with these with these concepts and I'm taking this one as an example because it's one of these more shallow issues <laughs> is it ever okay to lie and when do you in your real life have an opportunity to wrestle with that until you're faced with it and then who surrounds you to help you walk through that and to come up with a good idea so I think the challenge the whole point of challenge is to let's intentionally bring up these difficult topics now in a safe place with a tutor to guide the discussion if it goes off the tracks <laughs> I can bring it back in and and let them wrestle with these concepts on their own. And I think challenge A is a good place for me because those topics aren't gonna be so deep <laughs> in seventh grade uh, as they go. I hope other moms in my community will, will direct those challenge programs. I'm looking forward to that because <laughs> they're all awesome. <laughs> okay, so I think before I could say to someone who's new to homeschooling and they're going to jump in with a second fourth and sixth grader before I could say oh it looks like you ought to do RC or it looks like you ought to do CC or doing both would be fine I would need to know like a million things like number one that whole thing I just talked about in challenge with the students wrestling with deep concepts is that something that appeals to you is it something that would be important to you um, then I would definitely look at classical conversations and and if that is important to you if challenge is something that you would want your kids to go through I would start the CC program as early as possible I know it's done people do it all the time every year start fresh out of public school straight into classical conversations challenge programs and they do just fine um, but I think getting into the, the classical way of learning things and just the classical mindset and getting into the community and building those relationships them your children and you yourself as the mom is just going to be really helpful as you continue into those challenge years but you know don't let that stop you if you if the challenge thing sounds good to you then then that's what I think you're signing up for if you do classical conversations and while we're on it if there's any of my RC friends, um, I know I've talked a lot about old Saxon math books, and I think, okay, specifically for our Challenge A program next year, or for any challenge program, for any classical conversations program, you as the parent are the teacher and the authority, and you have all say over what your child learns or doesn't learn, and if there's anything in the CC material that you don't like, will you? You can tell your kid about it and you can not use it. It's totally up to you. CC never wants to step on your toes and assume any authority. It's not, it's not CC's place. And um, they're only there to support you and equip you to help you teach your child. So why did I bring that up? Oh, math books. Yes, because like the, the standard curriculum for challenge A is the Saxon 8-7 third edition or whatever is currently out there and I as the director I had to buy that textbook and 
I will present a problem or two or a concept from that in class every week. But everybody in my class is going to be using their own, their own math program. My own kid, well, he's already finished 8-7 and Algebra 1 half, and he's in Algebra 1. So who knows what he'll be in next year. So everybody, we're going to have the whole spectrum of students and where they are in their math next year in our challenge class. And that is totally fine because as the tutor, I'm not going to be saying, here's how you work this type of problem. We're gonna have, we're gonna have kids, they're about the same age, but they're all over the map on where they are and what they're studying, what their parents have chosen for them to study right now for their math. And we're gonna come together in class and each child is going to present, here's one, here's a problem I chose for whatever reason. I liked it, I hated it, it was fun, it was interesting. Uh, I couldn't do it. And, and they're going to present that problem and we're all going to just analyze it all to pieces and work together. So it's going to be review for the older ones, encouragement, uh, not older, you know what I mean. How about those who've done more math concepts than whatever, wherever you are. If you already know what we're talking about, it's going to be review, especially if you are presenting it. Because when you present the materials, when you really learn it. And then for people who haven't done that yet, it's going to be, oh, I see where we're going to go. And when they do get there, it'll be, you know, not the first time they've seen it, it'll be the second. So, um, and I would say at least half the class uses um, first edition Saxon 87 <laughs> through no influence of my own. Yeah, right. <laughs> so every CC community could stand a little RC influence, if you know what I mean. Okay, and so that is a whole lot of information if you want to go that way. And if that's not you at all, if you just, well, if all that discussion and wrestling with ideas is the point of challenge, which is the point of CC, then what is, what's the point of RC? The point of RC. I don't know if I can narrow it down to the exact point of it, but the major benefits that I see, okay, if you're just going to do RC, your kids are going to learn how to get up, get their work done. They're gonna learn to do hard work. They're gonna learn to concentrate for however long it takes to get it done. They're going to be able to go through life without really asking a lot of questions. They just grab the book, look it up, and keep going with, with whatever they were doing. Um, they're going to have a lot of time for other things, like CC. I mean, you can consider CC an other thing and, and do that. Um, benefits of RC. You can have a lot of kids being very productive, doing their work while you're just, you know, cleaning in the kitchen laundry, mopping the floors, you're there, but you're not standing there at the board going, this is how we do this problem, right? Um, they're going, if you can get them on that pattern, that routine, that schedule where they, they know here's what's required of them and they do that and they do it day after day after day and it's no big deal. There's, oh yeah, another math lesson and they sit and they do it and they work the problems and they, and they have learned something new and they learn to teach themselves and then you realize over the years, he learned it. He learned it faster and better than I could have taught him. Especially if you have several kids, right? And it will wear you out if you're gonna teach this kid this math lesson and this kid this math lesson and this one this one, and then you go teach him a science and English and all these things. Um, RC really simplifies it, just three things. And that third thing really covers the reading. It covers all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't know what that looks like in the high school years when you have to match your transcripts and stuff, but there's tons of help out there. RC Facebook page, um, people, and, and other RC forums. People who've done that and they know they can offer all kinds of advice and counsel on that. So, it depends on whether you like to stay home all the day, all, all the day, all day, all the time or 
Go places, oh man, my kids love to go places now. <laughs> Can we just stay home? <laughs> Um, but they both work well together because I can use RC as my baseline and then during the CC year that's 24 weeks or now in the challenge it's going to be 30 weeks and you know reading writing math we still do that during the CC year reading writing math um, I will substitute during the CC year I will use whatever CC writing program so and that'll only count if they're fourth grade and up other than that CC doesn't have a writing program so um, so it's always, and you really need to do reading, writing, and math, whether you're calling it RC or not. And RC is just a really good way that we found um, for us to do it. So, <laughs> see why I can't type an answer to a question? Because uh, really, this would be a two-hour conversation in the park. But it's over 20 minutes now, and I better stop. But hey, if you have any questions, um, feel free to... Put them in the comments. I might actually leave comments enabled. Who knows? For a while. Uh, but I will get overwhelmed trying to answer them. So others, feel free to answer for me. And uh, go ahead and chime in. And thanks for watching.